the student hall, right? Right? In Lauren Hall. Oh, yeah. And we um, screened a film of us being taught how to make pasta and then taught people how to make it and had dinner. Mm -hmm. Eating is a very important part of Studio 70. <laughs> but, and pasta is a very important part of the eating, right? Yes. Basically, this was a derelict building, yeah. and there was uh, mainly three people at the start: Alex, Lawrence, and Dan, all goldsmith, I believe ex goldsmith students. Um, and they basically wanted to do some something in a community space that had something to do with the commons uh, idea of like a public space, um, a place that's not like privatised, a space yeah. anyone can come in and somewhere that's uh, important for the community. They basically said to the landlord, they gave him a kind of a proposal, they said, if you give us your your building for a free rent, free lease, we will do it up for free. And he was so impressed with what they did, that instead of offering them a two year lease, he offered them a five year lease. So they've got this place for another like four and a half years for free. We have to pay the bills, but we don't pay rent. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah of okay. course. Yeah, obviously in yeah, capitalist spaces, you have to. It's, it's in a market economy, and you have to pay for a service. So we're not really as a space ready to leave the, the monetary economy yet, because we have to pay bills to uh, yeah. electricity companies, and um, unless we created our own. What that happened at the start, because they're very close to goldsmiths, and there's a big kind of artist yeah. community. Um, I think they got kind of they got a lot of people uh, saying they wanted to put on art exhibitions and. Um, do well, performances in the space at the start. The people that founded it were much more kind of activist campaigning really? backgrounds and were much more interested in uh, ma making the space, like you say, is this an anti capitalist space? Like yeah. making the space available for people, like, the, you know, there's Soulfed, an anarchist network, or, um, uh, there's, you know, community groups, there's like, there's uh, yoga for people of colour, there's, uh, there's, you know, like a, a, a kind of African black choir, all these kind of mm -hmm. groups that are kind of marginalised or excluded from other spaces, they wanted to make sure that they had that space. Yeah. And also the whole thing about gentrification, like I guess art's very linked in yeah, with that. True. Um, mm -hmm. With like, you know, exhibitions and this is art and then people like moving in and then the house prices go up. So it's about, can we be anti-gentrification as well? Yeah. Good question. I think it depends on, it depends on what it is. If it, uh, Fruitvale Cinema Club, so which is about black cinema, so that will that will bring people from across who are interested in that, also people locally, um, and then again the Brick Lane debates will bring people from across London that are interested in kind of like left theories. Yeah, and the um, and the hope is that it's not just going to bring as much as, as like as much as awesome as Goldsmiths is. As long as it's not just going to bring the Goldsmiths and Telegraph Hill crowd, but also like people on the states nearby. And, and you know, how can we politicise? Across 
across the UK, outside of London, that's an important thing, and also across the world, like the US, there's all these kind of like cooperative run and self sustaining yeah. and places popping up. And so it's like, why hasn't London got this? We soon found out, and we need a lot of, a lot of money. Well, that's, this is the thing. Bits in London, the kind of turnover is not cheap. This is what we can afford. Yeah. It's not, it's, we looked at pubs and things, and it's pretty much impossible. So, something on this scale, this size, uh, for kind of the amount of money that we don't have. I thought um, a little bit of, because uh, this is a music place and a lot of young people come here, and we thought about like gentrification. Mm. And this obviously is such an industrial area, so maybe, yeah. well, maybe it's with a purpose that you were here, because if you were maybe in another place. Well, I don't know, there would be Starbucks and then would be this, and this is not actually what. I mean, do you see yourself anti capitalist space as an anti capitalist space? I think a lot of places. I personally would say yes. I think a lot of people are kind of saying well, we're running up as like a cooperative thing, completely non-profit, trying to make things as cheap as we can. There is an element of existing within their existence, many of which we come and very, very much disagree with. I mean, um, we have to, you know, things like having the bar here, you know, yeah. it's kind of... Yeah, we thought, we thought about that, the bar, like, does it really make sense in the free space? Uh, without it, we want to be able to, that's the thing, without it, we couldn't stay open. So, we yeah, so we, we need it to stay open. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing, you know, we need big gigs here to kind of be yeah. able to offer it for, for groups for cheaper and stuff. So there's a lot of like, what well, we need is to exist, we need, yeah. you know, like the record shop, turn records, you know, that's a great addition, yeah. also they pay us rent and stuff, so yeah. that adds it too. Um, it's 12 grand a month if you increase all the bars they can turn. Uh, so, the rent, even just rent bills, it's grand a week. There are some possibly sinister reasons why they're not increasing it. And that goes back to kind of how we see how this place sits within you know, things like gentrification now. I mean, it's important to note that like, you know, things like gigs or kind of fancy toasties or coffees and stuff on their own do not displace families and things, but at the same time if you kind of complicit with that and you see that a lot. And yeah, you know, we know there's plans to tear down most of the surrounding area. And places with like shitty flats, like there's, um, you know, this is thing called New Bermondsey, where we want to raise the area. Yeah. And um, we know that Southwark don't like um, all the kind of churches on this road and stuff, they want to get them out, which, you know, we don't want to do that. So we don't want to be that reason, we can't kind of wait to support our neighbours, so, you know, when they got broken in or if they ever got um, friend in that way, we would be the first to defend them because yeah. we don't want to. Better things than the same for everyone else here, but we're kind of very aware of where we stand, even if you've got this kind of anti capitalist like kind of, kind of focus, you know, there is a risk of being complicit nonetheless. It's obvious that like various subcultures and various scenes and activist groups have really come down to the site. That's wonderful. Um, but it could always be much better. I think the next thing is like, you know, we don't want to be strangers in the neighborhood. Again, that's just how we kind of area. Yeah. This is one of the things we need to kind of like kind of work on now with our feet. Like we've definitely kind of relied on existing kind of scenes, existing kind of things, and also maybe having a lot of volunteers to do our jobs and that kind of stuff, but we're kind of aware. We don't um, it's interesting how it's kind of shot shone like on various uh, scenes on how maybe how male they can be or how white they can be and stuff, and we've kind of seen that as a good chance of like, okay. Space and stuff, you know, kind of, okay, why would, why is it like when people kind of coming in, anyway, if you come to a punk gig, for instance, how could we from space kind of facilitate or change that? So, it's definitely something we're working on.